Thanks for tuning in for another session of Back Porch Catechetics with Dr. Humphreys. In this short video, I'd like to focus on the section of Lexio Divina known as Oratio, the oration or the prayer. In some senses, it's difficult to talk about prayer as one step within the whole cycle of Lexio Divina, which is itself supposed to be prayer. So I think in order to get to terms with what's happening in the Oratio, we have to think about its role within the cycle. You begin, of course, with your reading of scripture, the Lexio, and then you move to the meditation, the meditatio. The oratio, the oration, the prayer, should arise out of the meditation. The point is that we have spent time with scripture, we have heard, heard the inspired word of God, we've reflected on it, and at some point in that reflection and our meditation, we rise out of the focus, the turning in of everything to the one central concept or the one central word, and we open up and speak to God, usually our words of praise, our words of thanksgiving, even our words of understanding. The fruits of our meditation come out in the oration. There are some schools of thought that attempt to force the oration, and this practice is good and healthy in some ways. It forces you to stop the meditation at a certain point and then articulate it to give it words, even to express to other people. The oration might be written down in some sense as uh, a short talk or a lecture that might be given as the fruit of your meditation. This is not the way it works best for me, but it is the way that a number of people reflect upon their own oration. It's also important to think about the parallels or the patterns that would emerge within the sections of prayer. So for Lexio, you read, and that's the subject of your meditation. And then the subject of your meditation is what gives rise to your oration, your prayer. Once you have spoken that oration, gotten it off your chest, so to speak, you're ready to rest in that truth or rest in that presence of God. And that's your contemplation. People will also see pairs within the four stages of Lexio, such that the reading genuinely gives fruit to the meditation, and the oration genuinely ends in the rest of contemplation. I think of oration, therefore, as the hinge between meditatio and contemplatio. It need not be very long. So sometimes for me, the oratio is simply a, a gasp a recognition that meditation has gone well and the fruits of meditation push quickly through oration and into contemplation. So that if I were thinking of the time sequence, it might be reading for a fair amount of time, meditating for quite a while, a very quick condensed oratio in which I simply say, thank you, God. Wow, this makes sense. And then sit and rest in that realization. For other people, the oratio is much longer relative to the meditatio and the contemplatio. Some of that may be where you are individually in your prayer. Some of that may be your personality. But some of that may be something you want to try to force back and forth. Again, if you're of the understanding that the oratio is something you control or you offer to God. In that sense, it is helpful to think of oratio in terms of the direction. In the phase of Lexio, you're taking in scripture. And in the phase of meditatio, you're condensing and collecting, even listening to God's inspiration in your own meditation. In oratio, the cycle is flipped and you are speaking back to God. In that sense, it's important to remember that there are five major ways that we would speak to God according to traditional definitions of prayer. And I would encourage you to explore those. Blessing and adoration, petition and intercession, praise and thanksgiving might be all five ways that we would express our prayer in the oratio phase of Lexio Divina.